Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today I want to talk about Sterling E. Lanier's series, Hero. We started out with Hero's Journey, and today we're going to discuss The Unforsaken Hero. This series, however, was meant to be a trilogy. Unfortunately, a third book was not published before Lanier's death. But wait a minute. What's this? It looks like SF Masterworks wants to publish an ebook called Hero's Answer. Apparently, there was an outline and notes that Lanier's goddaughter, Lucy Andrews Cummin, has taken and written the third book of the trilogy. If this webpage is to be believed, it will be on sale October 17th, 2024, approximately a week from the posting of this video. Here's hoping that that posting is accurate. So let's get back to the book for today, The Unforsaken Hero by Sterling E. Lanier, 1983. This is a follow-up to Hero's Journey. There is an introduction by Adam Roberts, a prologue by Sterling E. Lanier, and at the end of the book, a very helpful glossary. From the prologue, in the 5,000 years it had passed since the death, the world had changed. Much of the land was covered with vast forests or desert wastelands. What had once been five lakes now formed a single inland sea. That's the Great Lakes of North America. The climate was warmer, since the earth was deep in an interglacial period. Some species of plants and animals had died, and others had evolved in strange ways. In what had once been Western Canada, the Metz Republic was struggling to preserve a measure of civilization and to regain lost knowledge, guided by the scholar-priests of the abbeys. But more and more, they were losing to the unclean, a dark brotherhood of those who sought to destroy normal humanity and subvert natural law to evil purposes. Even the mental powers developed by the abbeys could not protect them from the latest attacks of the unclean and their foully mutated beast hordes, the Lee Mutes. That's nuclear mutations. The most reverend abbot, Calassi de Mero, was sure that a means to defeat the unclean might be found among all the records and artifacts collected from the past and stored in the abbey's central files. But the task of gathering and collating all that seemingly random information required time and manpower that he did not have. Once he knew, such work had been done by something called a computer. Abbot de Mero had no computer, but he had evidence that such a device might still exist, buried far to the south. To find and bring back the computer, however, would be an endeavor fraught with peril. Little was known of the region south of the Inland Sea, and the way there led through lands that were dominated by the unclean. For this dangerous mission, Abbot de Mero chose his former student, Père Hero de Steen, a warrior priest who had proved his ability as rover and senior killman in the frontier guards. Hero set forth, mounted on his morse, clots, an evolved moose. The intelligent and loyal animal was controlled telepathically and was an invaluable ally against the foe. They were soon joined by Gorm, a young bear whose elders had sent him to study human ways. Gorm gave Hero mental warning that the unclean had sent an adept to waylay him. The bear helped defeat the adept and later the hordes of loathsome lemutes the unclean began mustering against the companions. Then Hero rescued a young girl from a tribe that was torturing her. Her name was Luchar, and she claimed to be a princess of Dalwa, a nation on the Atlantic Ocean coast. That would be Delaware on the Atlantic Ocean. She told of fleeing from an unwelcome marriage, of being caught by slavers and finally being sold to the torturers. She was unlike any human Hero had seen, since her skin was very dark and her hair was tightly curled. His people, the Mets, were straight of hair and had reddish skin since they were descendants of the Métis, crossbreeds of French Canadians and Indians. The prologue goes on to summarize Hero's journey and to set up the story for the unforsaken Hero. Hero is the sort of protagonist with a charisma to make friends and allies easily. The first novel was very entertaining and you can find a review on my channel. I'll put a link in my description. The Unforsaken Hero starts in Luchar's kingdom of Dalawera on the Atlantic Ocean. By the way, 
the glossary is very helpful in defining some of these time butchered words so that we can understand what they mean from our present day. Hero and Lushar are married, and he becomes a prince in the kingdom. The forces of the unclean kidnap him, planning to torture and kill him. He escapes but has to cross the atomic devastation of southern United States. This is where the novel shines, one man against nature and mutations. There are some amazing set pieces here, including battles with large mutated animals. It may remind you of Edgar Rice Burroughs or other sword and sorcery writers. In particular, Hero meets an amazing creature, a creature which can draw people psychically to its location. It is enormous, and it exists in a dark pond in the mountains. It is over 5,000 years. It was around when there was the death. Most animals in this story have mutated to the point of intelligence, and some of them telepathically intelligent. Hero once again finds friends and allies and builds a following, a fellowship. The novel ends in a climactic battle with the unclean, but there are plot lines that are left open for the third novel. Will Hero and friends be reunited with the Mets Republic in time to go to battle against the unclean? And what about Lushar? Her kingdom is overrun by the unclean. Will she and Hero be reunited? This novel was a lot of fun, just like the first one. I really enjoyed the middle of this novel. Hero's journey across the Midwest and Southern United States featured a lot of interesting set pieces. And the ending of the novel left you wanting more. That is where the hope of Hero's answer comes into play. I'll make sure I'll update whether this novel becomes available. In thinking about the overall series, I'm starting to realize that it owes a lot to fairy tales. The talking animals of fairy tales are replicated here because of mutations. The hero's journey, the lessons learned along the way, are part of fantasy and part of fairy tales. This follows that classic storytelling, and it does a great job. I'm really happy that the SF Masterworks reprinted these novels. I give The Unforsaken Hero 7.5 out of 10. It was a fun read. That rating might go higher if Hero's answer is published. So have you read Sterling E. Lanyer? Did you know that he was responsible for Chilton Books' first publishing Dune by Frank Herbert? And does anybody know if Hero's answer will actually be published? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.